Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Backcast, our weekly podcast where we talk about all the things we've been playing that we're maybe featuring on the side, maybe not, uh, in our continuing journey to play through everything ever. I am Dan. I am joined by Joe. Hello, Dan. Hello, Joe. How's it going? Uh, you know, it's going. We're, uh, you know, doing stuff and playing <laughs> things. I, 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 I kind of stopped. I, I thought I had some place I was going to go with that. That didn't happen. Clearly not. Clearly, Clearly not. not. Well, how uh, about how about I just like kick us off Joe, here? Joe, what have you been playing? I have been playing actually more than usual. I not, well, it's not just Monster Hunter. I know we've, we've <laughs> and, and wow, we we've made a concerted effort to play more, but yes, also yes. I am glad I definitely that, insisted on it. So, um, and it has been good. It's been good to kind yeah. of uh, poke my head out of the Monster Hunter cave and uh, taste, <laughs> taste a couple things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I played a little bit actually as a uh, gift. My brother gave me Tricky Towers mm. uh, on Steam, pretty cheap. Yes, uh, real basic game. Give me the elevator pitch because I know you didn't play a lot, um, but you did. Yeah, play I didn't some. play a lot, but it's it's kind of a cool take on a Tetris like, um, maybe a a bit of a battle Tetris. Sort of. It's got a whole bunch of different modes. You're taking the Tetraminos or Tetraminos, uh, Tetraminos, um, potato, potato, uh, and yeah. and you're building chow- chow- chowda, you're <laughs> chowda. And you're building towers with them. Um, yeah, all right. And there's a, also a twist of magic. Yeah, wizards and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, you get to pick a wizard character, and there are magic abilities that you can use to uh, trip up your opponent or reinforce yeah. your own tower as you're building it. And it's, it's open air. It's not like in a... Correct. It's yeah, not in a, it's not your, a well. Yeah, if you're, you. if you're thinking just the standard Tetris box, no, it's no, not like that Think again. Yeah, it's very much like a tower builder, not necessarily mm. a Tetris. It's just kind of, you're using the same Tetris pieces, but you're trying to build in specific ways. And so you could build like off to the side. And yeah, you can hang things things off physics are a big part of it and it's mm. actually pretty impressive uh in that you can do a lot of stuff that I, you may not think of right away in with with a tetris piece when physics are involved okay okay so uh, it kind of mixes it up for sure and the battle aspect is interesting i haven't had a chance to really mess with that uh i'll have to hassle my brothers and see if i can get into a, a nice little multiplayer battle Ooh. but uh uh, yeah, they have a few different modes as well. Uh, there's an endless mode if you just want to build a giant tower. And okay. uh, But then they have like, I played through like the first section of the game, essentially. They have like 10 trial levels. Okay, okay. <clears throat> it's kind of like a, a tutorial, essentially, yeah, where you're like, here are each of the different game modes and- Things you may not have thought of. Things that you don't realize, like, and here's the goal for it. So, okay, you know, it's it's like- you have to race the clock and build high enough that you cross the finish line before the timer runs out. Okay. Or you have to uh, use a certain number of pieces and stay underneath uh, a certain uh, part. Okay. Or you have to um, build high and you have to use all of the pieces that they're going to give you. They'll give you like a finite number of pieces and you just have to build high enough to um, use them all without it falling, like too many pieces falling off right. okay, while okay. you're being sabotaged by like an opponent wizard. Okay. And, um, an evil wizard. Yeah. The evil wizard. It's pretty, it's kind of fun. It's, okay. It's a, it's a cool, so it's a puzzle game. It's essentially definitely a puzzle game. Okay. And then there's a, there's an aspect of, uh, being familiar with the pieces and okay. how, how they kind of interact with each other. Just a uh, raw Tetris, like business. a raw Tetris skill as well as like, some additional considerations of gravity. And, okay. Okay. And and how the some of the magic powers work. I, I like you can change pieces into like a permanent fixture, like so it won't mm. fall off and okay. it'll kind of defy gravity or okay. Um, or you can make you can like obscure your opponent's view as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there are like, like uh, interfe- interference and, spells. Yeah, there's interference. There's like light and dark magic. Okay. And uh, and each wizard kind of has their own like speciality. And, okay. And yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting take on that whole Tetris world, and I, I'm sure it's probably pretty fun um, as you get more like deeper into the game. Yeah, and you see the more challenging stuff and get uh, get more into the the magicking. Okay, so you can you can get all Harry Potter on on your opponents. You're a Tetris wizard, Harry. You're a Tetris wizard, Harry. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah like I'm I'm sorry. You there? That's all we had left. But it's pretty cute. Like um, the music is good. Okay. It really uh, kind of charming, just everything. It moves really well, feels really good. Okay. You have nudge. You have nudge moves, so you can just like shove a piece. Yeah. yeah. If you just wanna, a little like, try tap. And, like, yeah. Tilt it. It's it's not a little tap. It's a pretty forceful tap. Is like, it a pretty forceful tap? Okay. If you do it wrong, you'll knock your tower over. Like, oh, it's yeah. like Jenga. Yeah. Yeah. You can get you can get pretty froggy with it, honestly. Um, okay. But 
it's it's pretty fun. I look forward to checking out a little more and seeing what the uh, the deeper. Well, I guess we'll be gameplay. We'll be hearing more about that next week. Well, definitely. I, or in the coming weeks, let's say. Yeah, I will jump in and do some Endless because that sounds kind of interesting. I just want to build a really tall tower. I was a big fan of Tetris Attack Endless Mode. There you go. I really did love it. Yeah, pretty delightful and yeah. super simple. Really easy mm. controls, really basic. All right, straightforward premise, but they yeah. add layers onto it. Yeah, and it gets a little bit more variety as you're doing the different challenges and okay. trying to feel like, like I've actually had more fun on the ones where it's like, Hey, you have to use all these pieces, but keep it under this level. Mm. Like that has been more difficult. Like, I've never really been a big puzzle game guy. Yeah. So that was kind of a novel challenge that where, I found like attractive. My goal by the end of this is have you deeper into the puzzle nature of games. And I've I, always wanted to be better at it. Maybe puzzle and strategy. Let's say let's, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that's, it's always something I've wanted to be better at because I find that like if you're good at puzzle games, like yeah. I find that it makes some people like more. You're kind of more observant, and you can kind of like you're firing different parts of your brain. Definitely, in a way that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It helps cognition in a way that like other things don't. I, I know, hope so. Putting a crosshair on something, like yeah, yeah, is yeah. is not the most mentally highlight head click yeah. and and make make yeah, dead. Yeah, on heads is like not the most engaging. It really isn't. Or uh, or in the case of WoW, where you just have a priority system and you're just the like oh, tab to target, yeah, hit buttons, tab, yeah. hit buttons in the right order, and, and GG and collect loot. Collect like the loot yeah. um yeah i've and i've been looking for something that would be a little bit more intellectually stimulating oh so. well you know and i did show you uh, as promised last week i did show you a little city skylines and that's right to... yeah and that actually was a pretty interesting look uh, just a brief game yeah. still playing it growing my metropolis nothing to report on that but uh yeah great looking game if you uh, have never seen a builder game like city skyline it's kind of an impressive thing yeah, it's got a, a vaguely tilt shifty kind of view yeah and, definitely definitely yeah. when i love that look I and love you the zoom in you get the city thing. sound kind of rises yes. up to meet oh, you and you're like, yeah. very like charming yeah <laughs> in my, a my, lot of ways i've yeah. kind of st- i've kind of stepped away from it because i'm at the point where i need to design a uh, a metro system uh an above ground train system Ooh. and i gotta improve my buses and i'm like yeah i don't want to do that but my traffic's starting to suffer and as someone who has to commute a lot for my actual job <laughs> You're just like, I feel there's oh, a part of me that dying too, inside. Too close to home. Well, there's a heat map, and like uh, there's a large sections of the city that are red, and I'm like, I'm sorry. So I'm what, sorry, all of you. Will this eventually like apply? You know, as you're driving, you just like understand why like our own oh. local road systems are so terribly <laughs> well, designed. I understood. <laughs> I understood that before, but yes. Well, I um, mean, you experienced it before. Right. But did you understand the the? The, I can uh, look at it and see how it's the, wrong. The civil yeah. engineering problems that oh, exist. Oh, gee, there's some places that it's readily apparent. I'll tell you what. Uh, the um, the funny thing is I've heard people t- looking up like the European uh, style of why you do European roundabouts versus American roundabouts and like getting sucked in deep wow. into uh, traffic flow issues because if people can't get to certain parts of the city, those parts of the city can't get business and they'll dry up and go away. Arguably, that's the ultimate puzzle game. Yeah, right. <laughs> is economic <laughs> management. Uh, but we're not going to get into that right now. Um the other th- uh, one brief thing we wanted to mention, well, I wanted to mention, uh, Diablo 3 season just ended, and the new one comes uh, come, comes out or starts uh, next week. Oh, that means I'm going to have to go and like sort through all of my items yep, from last season. Stuff. Uh, and my dilemma... <laughs> I still never hit 800. <laughs> you were so close. Oh, I, was terrible. Cl- I was close enough to... But Monster Hunter, man. Yeah. We'll, well get other, to that, Other too. things came up. Yeah, yeah. Let's, say, let's say it that way. Uh, the, um, but the thing that's... Uh, my, my dilemma is this. The two free sets for the classes I play, Necromancer and uh, Crusader. So Crusader, it's Thorns of the Invoker is the the free set, and it's Gift of Inarius for the the Necromancer. Interesting. Which are the sets that really kind of, I really enjoy playing above everything else. I really like the way those two play. I'm pretty sure I'll go Necromancer, but at the same time, it's like, but Thorns, I'm really good at, I know Thorns. (laughs) I know that build. I know that build inside and out. Um, I wonder if they've changed... uh the necro the Yanaris build because it was that was underperforming that, that wasn't the meta build before well because what because what happened is when they launched necromancer before the season the gift of mirna right or, or the, gem ter- was, the gem was the broken. gem was broken so they nerfed the gem and then didn't matter necro was still on top well be, but no a different build came on top and then they decided oh you know what we should do yes we should lift everything up and they left that gem nerfed Right, which is fine. I was okay with it. <laughs> well, I like that build. Didn't, didn't bother Stop me. Stop that. Well, I mean, I'm curious. <laughs> well, about, it's because it was broken. That's it was, why it was I, like, overly you were just overly healing. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so 
Uh, you know that that's coming up. Uh, shadow, shadow build for the uh, which Hunters. is always delightful. Sadly, never meta, except mm. the one time, like except the, for when, once, when, when right it first when it, put, right when it first launched. And they're like, "Oh, this is too meta." Yeah, it's too powerful. Yeah, right. But it was delightful. I really enjoy that build, and that that's encouraging. If they give you that just out of the gate, like, right? That's actually pretty good. Well, and that gets you gets you into where the uh, shenanigans start faster. True, true. Which I'm looking Though forward maybe to. Maybe I should try, you know, something else this season. I always demon hunter. You have you've never I, not oh, demon hunter. I, I don't. Yeah, I can't handle you it. You necker a little I, bit I out a, of season when it first launched. Yes, I did. I didn't seem to enjoy that a little bit. It was fine. Um, I didn't like the downtime. Because you went, the, you went to so the yeah, with the true set. Yeah. True and the downtime between uh your land of the dead was just too much it was it, it made it uh really weird you just have weird huge burst windows and yeah. it wasn't fun uh, i yeah. like the demon hunter because it flows really well like it's got a very consistent uh power flow so mm. I, and that's it, what keeps me from playing wizard as well those archon yeah windows it's, it's like that's the only time you're doing damage i like the more consistent uh demon hunter place there is even f- though it's not the most powerful right there this this season the firebird set is what they give you and so that's the drag like that's pop they get on a lead on fire and drag mm. them through the level yeah, that's a really weird i way don't like it either to do that. I, I, yeah. I don't have the self-control for that build yeah it, well it doesn't seem fun you know? No, it's not. It doesn't seem fun. It seems I like a weird a, gimmick. Disintegrate is a fa- is fantastic. That's always been delightful. That, yeah, that, yeah, that's a fun way to use. I've but always loved the uh, the arcane disintegrate build where you just like double damaging things uh, that are slowed oh, with nice. the inside the beam. So you yeah. just stick the beam and it slows them down to a point where they just like just slowly walk through your laser at you until you they die. And they're just ticking over. That but it's never very meta. It was fun to play that. Yeah, it's either like a low level just kind of hey, I'm bored. I'll, th- I'll throw this together. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I would play. Monk maybe. Mm. The monk is kind of interesting. I did really uh, enjoy playing Monkey the, King this season. The Uliana build is back the, in the day. It's Monkey King for free. And they've re- the monkey they've game. changed that up. So I, I am not at all qualified oh, to talk about okay. that. Uh, I think it's Jade Harvester. Jade for, Harvester for the Wait, Jade Witch Harvester Doctor. Is a Witch Doctor set. Oh yeah. right, so I thought we're, we were still talking about Monk. I, I'm leaning into you're, uh, good, you're good, and I think it's Might of the Earth or something for Barbarian. But okay, I right. haven't touched my Barbarian since the Crusader came out. So yeah, Barb is still been still all ra- rare. My gear. favorite by any means. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's all coming down coming down the pike. Interesting. I'll have to look into that a little more. It's it's pike, right? Coming down the pike or coming. I've heard people say coming down the pipe, and I, I'm like, that's I not. Think it, kind of works both ways it does i but think it is pike but that's it's real old timey yeah I, I like old timey turns of turns of I phrases aware. <laughs> and speaking of old timey uh let's talk about the game i've been playing um so i don't know how deep we're gonna go on this one but uh, i've been playing the talos principle which is that's a hell of a thing puzzle puzzle game as well right uh puzzle game use also all of the witness also using tetraminos funny enough oh right it you're co- but you're does. collecting real yeah. world tetraminos and plugging them into a puzzle, but that's not really what makes Talos Principle interesting, right? Uh, you it's all are about that lore. You're a robot, and very quickly you're aware. Like you can see your hands, you are just a robot. Uh, and and the first thing that happens is a giant booming, let's say, um, celestial sounding voice from the sky declaring itself. Elohim and the creator of you. That's pretty on the nose. That's pretty on the nose. Is, uh, has commanded you to sol- basically solve puzzles and go through. And it's... It's like real life. Well, it's 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 this very interesting thing that... Uh, it's, I mean, obviously saturated with religious parable and things like that. There is a, they say, a serpent analog that, oh. is, that is actually a, like a, uh, <laughs> like a 386, these terminals that are out. Uh, in the world that it starts. Okay, okay, spoilers. Guess what? I'm spoiling this. But as you're as you're <laughs> if trying, you we're gonna play Talos Principle. <laughs> Turn this off. I'm not gonna go spoil what actually where it actually oh, goes. Okay, sure. But but that's the serpent. Is this terminal you start interacting with fairly innocuously and has like audio log, well, not audio logs, but uh, text logs, and you come to find out very quickly that it's an AI that's in this thing, and you have some interesting conversations now. One frustrating part of Talos Principle is that it gives you text options to reply to w- with, and I'm just like, no, these. Are, I wouldn't say any of these things. I, <laughs> I would address this particular <laughs> argument, and I can't. So I found that frustrating. That yeah, would be frustrating. But but it is also interesting to, to to follow the story where it goes, and you do have some back and forth with this this serpent and this voice in the sky, and there's a tower that you're Wait, coming. So what are, you're commanded to solve puzzles, to like like. To what end? Just because you're commanded to do it? Uh, if you play through the straight, just to the end ending, yes. 
Interesting. But you're, at one point, you won't... The, the kind so of, there's a little bit of a morality play going there's, on. It open, the world opens up, and there's a tower, and you're commanded by the voice, you're kind of bad, commanded by Elohim, to not climb the tower, to stay out of the tower. Now, I planned on getting to a certain point and come back and climb the tower... I didn't. I finished it. So I'm playing through again and getting to the point where I could climb. I want to get everything but the... I know where the ending point, like, where you can't go back anymore is. So I'm going to get... I want to get to that point, get everything 100%, look at guides, get there's sure, hidden sure, stuff. Yeah. Are and, there trophies and achievements? Yes, there is. Right on. Uh, it's on It's on everything. I should say that. Oh, it's, right. It yeah. is on everything. I have the PS4 and the PC version <laughs> because it was cheap on both and I figured what the heck. Why and, not? Yeah. So yeah, so I got it on the PS4, played through that, and I'm actually playing through it on the PC now. Uh, but there's a, there, it, it's, it's a lot of fun to play through, but it's very interesting as it gets into philosophy, because one thing you find out is that humanity is gone. Humanity is no longer alive. And well, what happened is that there's some disease or something that has happened and humanity, their, their great effort is to archive whatever, all of humanity before that, before we die. It's, we okay. want to save something. Just as some kind of proof that we're here, so There's, there is like a like a no like a, a goal that you're working towards, right? Right, and so one of the 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 the, the, ga- the, the scientist lady that uh, like you find audio logs from her as she's talking about it, but they make reference to the fact that the reason there's tetraminos in this world is because they had to use a game engine because that was the most the most appropriate thing on hand that they could convert into this. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, you know, it's... They, they go, but oh. it goes... It gives it a better explanation than I am. But it's real fascinating and it, it's real calm music and all the puzzle worlds are set in like like ruins of Greece and ruins of Egypt and like these beautiful forested landscapes and it's just... It is a very zen game. It is a super zen game. Yeah. And I, I'll admit I was a little bit intimidated by the fact that um, the, you, you'll get a... You'll unlock new puzzle elements. And I'm like, oh no, I'm terrified of what they're going to do to me with this new puzzle element. But it never gets now. Have you ever too played? Inti- did you play any of the Witness at all? I never played any of the Witness. Oh, okay, so I I have the Witness and never did finish it. We mm. may want to do something with that at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a weird, also philosophically strange game. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I was just wondering if there was like kind of crossover there, or analogs to like similar puzzle solving. If I had played it, I would be able to answer you, but. Uh, My bad. <laughs> I will say, well, let me, let me, the Tales Principle, you, you start out with uh, these things called jammers. And there's like exploding orbs that follow a patrol or machine I, I guess guns what I'm more and, asking is like how they teach you each of these things. Like, is it kind Lay- of like layered a, up? Is it a very layered, like, as you Organic. learn, as you kind of complete like one area, it gives you the skills that you need to get into the next area. And, and then it kind of melds the different puzzle solving styles no, together uh, and builds upon that as you're unlocking new areas and getting into new spaces. Yes and no. Uh, so, okay. the, so, so if you, if you go do everything, you are unlocking new pieces and getting access to different items sooner to get into like the more secret areas and bonus areas. Okay. But at some point you do need to learn all these things and unlock these abilities. And there is a point where they say, Oh, you forgot about the jammers. Well, the jammers are back or you forgot about the time, the, the duplicate uh, record. There's a station where you record, you do something. And then when you go back, you could flip it to playback and there's an actual okay. physical representation of you doing those things. Interesting. So you're basically supposed to co-op by yourself through certain puzzles. Okay. That's kind of interesting. It's really, it's That's really interesting, interesting, but yeah. also terrifying. Yeah, similarly, the witness like does uh, looks like it sounds like Talos Principle has like different puzzle solving yes. skills. Yeah, but it seems seems like the witness is more of like a, it's kind of like leading you in each area. It's like, hey, you you have to know how to do some of these previous puzzles. Like you'll know when you're in an area you're not supposed to be in because right. you just don't even have the base like you're like what do I do concept here? of how to solve the puzzles right. until you've like gone to. Uh, gone through some other area that teaches you those skills and then you have to combine them later ah, on to like, get gotcha. through and it's you're on an island and it, it's very like atmospheric okay. as well yeah um, beautiful looking game as well. we should do something on we, we should do the we witness should, we, we should do like a Talos Principle witness like uh, side by side yeah side by side uh, I don't, I, yeah I mean we'll see. We'll they're see. Both, uh, I sound like they're both great games the yeah. um, the Talos Principle is more linear you'll you'll end up in a kind of a hub area very atmospheric but it has doors with teleporters right. one two yeah. three, and they're numbered so and at a certain point you unlock the next area so it is more linear and there's more than what you need to get move forward in a way that it's like, hey, hey, if you really want to dive in, we've got a lot of puzzles, but you don't need to do everything to do to get through the game. 
Uh, but there are hidden things. There's unlockables. You can unlock uh, basically messengers, which if you're stuck on a puzzle, you can you can if you've collected enough secrets, which is which is a weird concept because. You can request help. Banking up some cheats. But not even cheats. You're just requesting help to see how a puzzle's solved. But at the same time, you have to be pretty darn good to get all the, the unlockables to get to the messengers hmm. to unlock them. It, That's kind of cool. It, it is kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, uh, kind of getting back to the philosophy thing. They actually talk they, they, in the game a great de- uh, de- uh, detail of what the Talos principle is. It's, it's from Greek mythology, and it's like this golem that's it kind of la- it's layering on. And there's a question on what is a person because the the serpent is of course questioning you not your humanity but your sentience a lot. And you see markings from other AI, like other uh, robots that have gone through this and are struggling or ones that are devout. And it layers the world with all these different kind of atmospheric tones because you can see that you're not the you're not the first one and you're definitely not the last one. I should note that there's a uh, I don't know there's there's an interesting idea because at, at the very beginning when you're, you're accessing it, you know what you're do- the, the database that you're trying to access basically you, you must have been this program must have been running for a very long time after humanity's gone because it's like 95 percent corrupt like all the data is just gone oh, okay so it's it's kind of bleak in that point which which makes me sad that i never actually got up in the tower because i, I need to see what's up in there yeah there's I, a whole aspect of that game you haven't even seen yeah did, i need i need the subversive part you play through and you're like okay that was a puzzle game I'm like no there is something in that tower and i need to go see it so that's why i'm Trying to get back there. Uh, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Completionism and, then, and all that. I will say, and also one of the, my the, my favorite little touches to the game is so you have humanity knows it's done for, and you get little snapshots of life outside this research facility that they're building all these things and doing all these things, and you have people saying, "Well, I showed the first symptoms. I'm actually going to go home and be with my family because I'm done." Kind of an interesting, there's like these weird, if you're reading it, you're, you're aware of what these people are saying when they're saying it, you get, there's some touching stuff. And then you get interesting snapshots of the internet and forums and things like that. And you do have a, an interesting forum chain that starts with somebody posting first as a no, thing. That, that's never an interesting forum. Post. Well, <laughs> except for that's the same person who, as everyone drops off, they, they kind of go, well, last, I guess. <laughs> before they log off and they're the last person off that forum oh man you know is that really that like <laughs> but at the same time it's kind of like it's kind of fitting for humanity you're like of course somebody would somebody would do that because uh, yeah they're the first to do last sure <laughs> I, I love sure. The, the face that you're making they're like uh, uh I, I love that the, that the whole first mentality gets gets into you so it, much I, it is very triggering ah, triggering is a strong word it's irritating for sure. Yeah, it, the idea that that's like a some like badge of honor. But here and here's here they're clearly mocking it. But I love that it's for you. It's already well past. It's that. so past. Like <laughs> it's like you've gone to knuckles already. Like so right. last. But the, remember, last this month. game came out like four or oh, five years I, ago. I know it's old, but but still, yeah. I, I found it kind of a not, not, not it touching, was tired but then. Yeah. Oh, the, so immediately yeah, it was immediately it was tired. Immediately, just like this is dumb, and it's still amazing that you still have people doing it. Like, they're just like <laughs> clinging to the dead rotting corpse of this well, like internet meme hey guess what uh the what's fashionable train passes everybody all the time it's people it, fall off the all prob- the time well the problem is it's cyclical so it'll come back around and pick them up eventually it'll be fashionable to post first again yeah yeah of course it just like 80s fashion is back in now <laughs> like it's the same thing all that was once old is new again exactly battlestar galactica has taught us everything i haven't finished that series because i got Speaking of triggered, <laughs> that end of the, the first episode of season two, I'm like, that's garbage. You would never define, design a spaceship like that. I'm done. Oh, but anyway, yeah, that's funny. Uh, but Talos Bridge was a good, and, it's, it's a good puzzle game with great atmosphere on top of it and even better music that just lets you just, just it's just kind of there, man. Just go solve your puzzles the way you <laughs> want to, man. Go solve your puzzles, man. Like, that's just your opinion, man. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go all the way down that way. Yeah. But uh, it's, I really enjoyed it, and I'm going to have to get through it again. It's one of those, like, I got a couple minutes. I'm going to get a couple more puzzles in. And even though I beat it, I still look at some puzzles. I'm like, I th- something about a switch? <laughs> like, I'm trying to remember what, I, what I'm what i doing. Uh, some of them was like, oh, this one took me an hour. I yeah, remember if you one. don't stay up on puzzle games, man, like, I feel you lose those skills. Like, I, mm. uh, like going back to The Witness, since it is very analogous to uh, Talos Principle, um, I found that 
even taking a short break and I would forget like there, cause there's a breadth of puzzle. There's things that they teach you. Yeah. And then suddenly I had forgotten one or two. Right. And that just becomes it's uh, about mission critical. Yeah. Like you just like all of a sudden it's just like, Oh, well I can't do this now. I have to go back and find where they taught me about these puzzles and figure out how to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, so it, I kind of stalled like pretty hard. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing that, that there's this window uh, like where you need to step away from a puzzle game and just decompress. decompress. Yeah. Decompression. But if you, seriously. and then come back to it. And when, if you, if you're in that window, you're like, I know what I need to do. I'm good. I can just keep and you going. Just, and you burn through that puzzle you were stuck on and like five or six more. Right. And you're like, yes, top of the world. But if you're just slightly too long, you're like, yeah, what does any of this mean? If you uh, wait too long, you will lose it. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. User but, to lose it, so to speak. Yeah, definitely true. Uh, but but uh, you know that's yeah. We should do a swap. I'll play the witness. You play Tosmo yeah. Principal or something. Uh, Trade it up. Comparison. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but tell me about what you've been playing this week, Joe. Well, other than other than Tricky Towers. Right. Uh, so after that Nintendo Direct, uh, was it a month and a half ago? Yeah, the one we watched. Um, and we were charged up. Yeah, on. real charged up. When I saw the world ends with you is getting that final remix that in square Enix has been doing this a bunch with, well, uh, everybody's been re-releasing it up. Yeah. It, but it's been like very much a square Enix has done it with everything now. Like they really they're done with all of the kingdom hearts has all now been remixed. Oh, right. Like final mixes and stuff. It's, it's kind of their tag thing. They're gotcha. Doing now. And, uh, kind of out of left field, the world ends with you. Right. Was announced. We, we mentioned at the time, I was always super interested in that. Never got into it. I am waiting for the Switch version. Right. And you could not. I could not. I, I, you know, I've been kind of just thinking about it off and on. Like, oh, yeah, man. Like, that will be really cool to see on Switch up And And um, I don't know how they're going to adapt the controls to, uh, to a Switch because it, it's very weird on the DS. Mm. Um, I, do, I, I do own it. I played a bit of it once upon a time. You have notes. Sort of. Yes. Uh, sort of. I have some reference material just in case I do forget what it, I want to talk in the about. Form of a 3DS in the form of my with actual game 3DS on and running. with, with my uh, copy of World Ends With You is running. Um, but I jumped back in, uh, just kind of wanting to refresh myself on what it was that I really I loved about it then. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to why I fell off. Yeah. Uh, because I have really enjoyed jumping back in. I just started a new game. I didn't mess with my old data. I just no, immediately no. deleted it. Didn't want to see. Didn't wow. want to jump yeah. in. Sight unseen. Didn't care. I was like, you know what? I got to go at this fresh. I, the game came out in 2007. So, Ooh. yeah. And uh, it was on the, the DS. So it's pretty old. It came out... Uh, it's very influenced by things of the time, especially because it's a Square Enix game. Yeah. So there's a lot of shades of Kingdom Hearts in its art style. Was Kingdom Hearts out in 2007? Was that? Uh, oh, before that, yeah. Right, like, but the original was... Kingdom Hearts was way before that. Like this, this is actually done by the um, a developer who had worked on the Chain of Memories Kingdom Hearts game, <gasps> which, which was, was probably a, the... a dumb card battle that was also on the DS. Probably the the game where they worked on before this one. Uh, right. Yes. Okay. That was the one that the Jupiter uh, had done before. Okay. Before uh, that, so Kingdom Hearts had already been out. Already became its phenomenon that that it was. I'm actually really curious as to when. Uh, I, I guess Persona one. I don't know. I haven't. Pl- I'm not familiar enough with anything pre Persona Four. Right. Persona Four was uh, before Persona Four was around that time that you're talking about. I think it might have been eight or nine. But Persona th- uh, Persona Three at best is contemporary with it. But I was. I think it was before this game because I know we kind of talked about it before it having shades of Persona. Okay. Uh, in the Nintendo Direct thing, because like, I think you were asking, and I was like, yeah, it totally does, as I recall. Uh, now that I'm into it. Uh, probably four or five hours. Yeah. Uh, so not terribly deep in, but, uh, wow. Like I almost, it's, it's eerie how much it reminds me of persona. Like how much I wonder if like persona five took cues from this game. Really? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So the premise for this whole thing yes. is really strange. It's very, very square Enix. Okay. In that you are just suddenly, you just suddenly wake up in, okay. in Shibuya. You're in Japan. Uh, yeah, yeah, a and, prefecture in Japan. Yeah, yeah, you're in Shibuya, and you... Shibuya is fun to say. It is really Shibuya. Shibuya, uh, Shibuya. You don't know why you're there. You don't know where or what's going on. Uh, you're just kind of confused, and weird stuff starts happening. And these weird, like, shadow frogs come out of nowhere and start attacking you. Yeah, very Persona-sounding, okay. It's unreal how much Persona this is. <laughs> like, I've, as I'm going through, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like... Either the Shin Megami Tensei. Is this baby's first persona? Kinda. I don't know. 
it's 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 a it is a very Square Enix take on a Persona esque, uh, maybe, or maybe it's just like a Square Enix take on an Atlas game. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're in Shibuya. These weird frogs attack you. You're just trying to run away. You run into this girl who's like, "Hey, uh, we need to like take care of these frogs here. They're gonna mess us up." Okay. Form this pact with me. And we'll be, we'll fight them together. Okay. So you sit there and you decide, okay, cool. Like, I agree. Let's form, say, let's, I, let's it, form this pact. I art thou and thou yeah, art I. Seriously, kind of there's stuff. a whole cinematic where there is literally a cinematic where you're like uh, top screen and bottom screen on the DS have like oh, rotating okay, uh, yeah, character yeah. models. And then like you kind of like overlap for a second and it chimes and mm. bam, the, fa- the pact is formed. And she gives you uh, kind of the core mechanic of this game is in the form of these pins that have little icons on them and they imbue you with powers. Okay. So you, know, you she gives you this like fire pin so you can fight the the guys. And this is where this game really just kind of like becomes a weird kind of genius thing where they take the DS and it's all based on you using the stylus against these on-screen monsters in different ways. You're either like dragging the fire, the trail of fire over their enemies or you're tapping to shoot fireballs or okay. swiping to throw things at them. Okay. And then it adds uh, a second screen. Right. In the form the DS has that top screen and bottom screen. Uh-huh. And they add your chick that you get a pact with. Yeah. Uh, she becomes the second battle screen. It mirrors dimensionally mirrors where you are so you're both fighting the same enemies in two different places kind of two different places but they mirror each other okay so if if they're if it, if it jumps to the left on on your screen it jumps to the right on the other screen okay and you can control her on top in a weird pseudo card battle okay thing where you're having her attack to and do and you're inputting different combos on the d-pad while casting spells and attacking on the oh. bottom screen <laughs> oh wow it sounds it's a lot it's a lot yeah yeah, yeah. it's a lot to really kind of grasp but huh. like yeah as as you're as you're you find out that uh you are in this weird game where these reaper it's called the reapers game okay and there are these reapers who are after you as players okay and you're not the only players there are other players and so they build in the idea of like the multiplayer kind of yes, cross play, yeah, not cross play, kind of but that trope. The A secret is multiplayer aspect. Uh, there's no, there's no actual multiplayer, right? But there's, but, but yeah. there's like kind of you're connected yeah. with everyone. You're else. connected with everybody else who's involved in the game, who's been pulled into this weird, uh, like, I don't know, adjacent dimensional Shibuya yeah. in Japan, and you're running around, uh, completing the missions that these Reapers are giving you every. Uh, Every day, okay. Basically. Every, so they're not after you so much as they're. Oh no, they're totally after you. They want to erase you, like. But they, but they're doing. They, they have rules. Yeah, there are rules because it's a game. It's a game. There are moderators and things like that. Yeah, okay. And your moderator slash guardian, yeah, uh, a la Persona Five, is a barista, runs and owns a coffee shop. Okay, and he like is totally the same dude <laughs> that's in Persona Five. Really, he's a younger, more hipstery version of that guy. But that, but that guy, it's absolutely that guy. Huh. Um, huh. Except he's. A little bit more with it he's actually because he's part of the game he's a yeah. guardian he's kind of a moderator uh in in the reapers game and he's like he finds you and he warns you that the reapers are uh are also people like they're kind of like the bad guy people though okay their responsibility is to erase players from the game and if they don't they get erased so it's kind of a oh. weird like, it sounds like it's promising a lot, and I don't believe it's going to deliver on what seems like a it's, very cool premise. It's so early, yep. but it's amazing. That and, sounds cool. And the persona gets deeper. So persona intensifies. Persona intensifies. So you're you're just running around Japan, basically killing, uh, killing these weird shadow creatures that are all very persona. y You can only see them when you're using your your special pins to scan the area. Wow. Okay. And you see the little icons floating around and you can, you kind of choose is there's no random battles. You're like choosing how much you want to fight and it's all very story driven. So you're running around helping people. Uh, the missions usually involve landmarks or people who are being troubled by these. It's called noise. It's all okay. very musically based. The music's okay. fantastic. Okay. Uh, a lot of it's like, just like very hipstery, very styled fashion based. Right. Uh, and that's kind of where the more persona aspects are actually in the fashion aspect. Right. As okay. you run around, you unlock different shops and you uh kind of in, like you you build your relationship with the shops okay. in order to access their wares which is your gear that oh, yeah, you yeah. directly get and in order to even unlock it you have to like 
rank up with them like okay. you, like like you do through relationships and persona or like and that's how you, destiny like um rep no bar. it's not a rep bar per se okay uh it's very much more of the persona thing as you okay. as you are like visiting the shops and browsing their wares and doing things like that you will unlock they'll like they'll like see that you're interested in a certain item so they'll be like oh they'll tell you more about it they'll tell you what special abilities it has oh neat and and as you rank up with that they'll they'll make more things available to you as well okay and it, it it's it's been kind of shocking like how persona it is uh in a really weird way the combat yeah. system is like pretty complicated and interesting as well with the whole like you're running two screens at one time and trying right. to coordinate back and forth so that will be interesting to see how they bring that over to switch yeah there's a bit of a flow to it as well cuz as the person you are impacted with uh you as they do their like combos and stuff they kind of shoot an energy ball back at you they call it a puck in the yeah. game and it just bounces back and forth between each screen so there's a little bit of a flow where you want to be like uh. bouncing back and forth focusing more on where the power is because it like doubles your damage or whatever okay and it, it, it's really strange and it's just yeah. like systems on systems oh there's what? also a food system oh man gotta eat before you hunt <laughs> yeah you gotta eat before you hunt but in this case it's permanent stat increases real okay it gets so it gets a little deep because each plate of food yeah. uh, has so many bites that um, are that it takes to eat and it's b-y-t-e-s by the way uh, okay i don't know if that's telling or anything i'll, I'll let you know yeah, i'll let yeah, you know let as me know i get deeper goes, into yeah. the game but uh, as you battle you will consume so many bites per battle based on its difficulty okay and then once you get through the number of bites you'll get whatever the stat increases and for every 24 real time hours you can take 24 bites got it so you have to kind of like plan what you're gonna eat throughout huh. that day and yeah. then as i'm buying each of the different food things and you ranking up with the ramen shop and with the wherever, oh best are so you max yeah. rank ramen shop yeah, yeah yeah and he's like oh cool thanks for like patronizing my store it's been really rough getting customers in here yeah uh, he's like rank up here now you can buy instant ramen and this was like takes very few bites to eat right. and uh so and it, but it gives you a pretty decent uh, like sync your sync rate increases with your partner. Okay. Because uh, as you synchronize more and more with your partner, the the card game combo thing that then does the the all in attack. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is more easy to kind of attain and okay. find. It's kind of the the, the card game is kind of a matching game where you're you're bouncing back and forth like trying to figure out the combo to unlock the all-in attack with your partner okay I, it's it's so persona and it's so like, but so not weird concept yeah so not but just so many shades of persona it's scratching all of the same itches that it uh comes with yeah and it's also weirdly hipster and of an of a weird mid 2000s hipster in japan kind of era and the fact that you're running yeah. around in an actual Japan, like you're in Shibuya, you're yeah. like hitting the stations and stuff, like it just it just reeks of Persona. And I mean, I guess maybe Persona is it's, maybe, maybe it's the other way around. They I might don't have, know. They might have been in pre-production on it's five, serious, and they're going, yeah. "I like the idea." They totally uh, whiffed yeah, on it, but let's. I, 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 but that's the thing. Like World Ends with You was very well received. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was kind of a novel control scheme. Yeah, and now they're like I, all I've heard as far as the um, the remix is that like they're just kind of reworking the way it controls. I, I, if I had to guess from what it sounds, I bet when the puck passes, you automatically switch or you can switch or something. Between, I, I wonder, it'd have to be something like that, right? It might be a split screen when you're in combat, Ooh. like left and right, because yeah. they're talking, cause that's oh, the way the Joy-Cons work. The, one Joy-Con for one. One Joy-Con's one side, yeah. the other Joy-Con's that would the probably, other That would be a way of doing that. That's true. But since you don't really have a stylus set up on a Switch, I don't know how like you know doing the different motions will uh, we'll yeah. cast spells in a, on a Switch. Now you just type it into the D-pad, yeah. all uh, Ocarina of Time. Oh, and then I guess with the combat, so like the kind of the key thing, the pins that you're collecting, tons of different powers. Yeah, got all the elemental uh, strengths, resistances. Uh, you level, you level up each of the pins. Uh, you collect them. You can have four decks of pins, so okay. you can go in with like whatever loadout you're kind of feeling. They also have sub slots for each of those, really? so you okay. can stack that even further. Wow, it's 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 so deep, and I'm only getting like the very early stages of it. I've only unlocked three of the six uh, main slots for it. Okay, uh, so I'm really curious to see where it goes. Uh, so, uh, kind of a key part of the whole thing, like it launches, you find uh, you're in this weird world in this game, and it says you've got seven days. Basically, like this okay. is a seven day period. I'm on day three. I'm only a few hours in. 
I think it's more than just the seven days. Or, there, or there's some kind of time travel yeah, element that's going to introduce or, or something. Or I get to day seven and it just starts over, but I keep all of my pins. It, oh, it seems dead like rising cast. It seems like it's big enough that either it, a la Persona, kind of breaks out of its original small right, scope right. into a more macro We're going to get this thing. teacher and that's all we need to do. Yeah. Oh no, oh, no the, the world's much yeah, bigger. And yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what it feels like. It feels very Persona in the like pacing okay that it's it's taking like it's like i have these time periods i have these missions each day that are on a timer and then as i complete them it moves on to the next day it's yeah. very like you've done this many things in the day yeah. and now it's day three you know it's blah 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 and it's moving on and on that does sound fascinating uh, that sounds it, i really want to see it but i i i, I, I need really, to wait for switch yeah need to wait for switch yeah i mean there's no reason to pick it up on on the ds unless you're just like real hard up for a mobile game i am not hard I up for anything to, i, I happen to own mm-hmm. it already and i yeah. was like i never did get into that and i think i'm in a better place now to really like get into it more i think when it came out i was expecting something more actiony like a kingdom hearts right and that may be why i bounced off i just don't remember really do you know about how many hours you in you were i don't i didn't even look like i said i just oh. deleted everything that was there gotcha uh i i want to say i was probably past that first seven days because i immediately was like oh yeah the seven day thing like and, but i can't remember where that went after that first seven days it may just start repeating and i'll have different missions and i'll be playing the game over and over like the the reaper game is in different iterations and okay because uh, there are other there are other named characters that you're dealing with as well like, yeah, yeah like you do in in persona i don't know how, if that changes much or if it's just you and this chick that you're a guy you're like kind of perpetually teamed up i don't know yet right uh, i should know more by next week for sure yeah well, but uh, we'll look forward to that yeah like yeah so real early game and i'm i'm really curious to see that sounds what, cool and it and i've only unlocked like four or five of the the different pins and you have like enough room for like 50. Wow. 50 or 60. So it's not a party system. It's a pin system. Uh, yes, correct. But you're still doing gear. Uh, where, Oh man, I forgot about this too. You know, I was talking about the fashion aspect where you're buying things. Yeah. So every area in Shibuya that you're running around has whatever's trending in the area, different brands. R- oh, the pins themselves have a brand. Where you're, bo- if you're buying okay, pins okay. from different shops, have brands. The clothing that you're wearing has brands, and okay. each of them has positives and negative based on the area you're in, where those brands are popular. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, and it's pretty severe. Like if you go into a, like some places, you'll just start doing fifty percent less damage if you're wearing Ooh, an unpopular brand of a thing. That's crazy. On the other, on the flip side, you're doing like four times as much damage if you're wearing like the, the right stuff. So it's pretty min maxi in that regard, uh, which also, you know, rubs my cheese. Yeah. I'm real excited. About Gross, that. but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm real excited about that. Uh, so I, I, it's got so much that I really like about these games and it's very JRPG weird little stories. Right now I'm trying to like find a tech, a tech guy for a band so I can get him back on, sta- mean, a on roadie? stage. A roadie essentially. He's more their like audio video guy. Gotcha. Uh, and and the, the band leaders like horse from yelling at everybody and trying to find this guy. So you have to go and like cleanse him of his noise. Okay. You have to get all the noise around him. So he's like not in a bad mood and wants to go like actually work. And it's it's just the more I'm getting into it, the more persona it gets, and I'm just like, wow, this is really cool. There are some games that I, I actually was doing some research on this. There is actually a couple of persona clones out there that are that try and do that thing. I didn't realize this was one of them. Well, I mean, I don't know if it is like I, 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 I'm sure. It's like, I, I wish I knew more about the older personas, right? Like right. Two like one, two, and three. Like, also, the whole Devil Summoner series and yeah, yeah. the Shin Megami Tensei stuff is definitely yeah, mainline SMT yeah, stuff. Yeah, like all of that. Like, I wonder how much because it does. It just screams Atlas, but with like all of the uh, all of the Square Enix goodies. Yeah. So yes, we'll we'll, we'll and the art style. So right, nothing but style. Yeah. So, so we will style. be checking in back in with that next week, definitely for certain. Um, and very briefly. Because we would be, we would hate to leave you guys going, going yeah, cold turkey. Remiss. Yeah, uh, we, know, we know you guys need your fix. So we've been, uh, we have been monster hunting. We continue to monster hunt. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm actually experimenting with mix sets, which is the concept of, okay, so instead of getting a full set of armor and getting that set bonus, you actually want to mix and match in order to get the stat you want in the. Uh, quantities you want in order to do more effective for the play style that you're looking for <laughs> which is weird uh, that it goes that way that it's like 
Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. I mean, if you're familiar with, uh, there's a little bit of it that happens in Diablo, where you're mixing sets to optimize. So, so, yeah, but usually you're mixing sets, not I'm going to completely get out of set bonuses so I can get these stats in these quantities. Right. Yeah. At some point, it scales better. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of a thing, and and you know, and it's, uh, I mean, the meta for the Demon Hunter this season was actually a mix of. Two sets where you were right. actually ditching the because someone six came out set bonus. Someone came out of nowhere with this mix set and brings like wait what and it just rocked the charts for yeah. the demon hunters and it's it feels very much the same way here where you're ditching maybe a top end set bonus for right. a couple of smaller ones or just raw stats and hoping to get yeah. the gem that drops later that has that, that set has bonus. the set bonus as well. Then that's that's where the big difference is, comes in in Monster Hunter is you can is get set bonuses. the set yeah. bonus can just drop as a gem itself. So like for one gem slot you can have a full set bonus that would normally be three at least three pieces right so, so yeah th- yeah between two three or two, four three is there four sets i thought there was only a yeah so so was like three the low rank stuff is a three set and anything in the high rank that only has a set uh oh uh, so the three beta set, sets are but the but the alpha sets are, are are the alpha and the beta sets are two set four set if i thought the alpha sets were still threes i'd have to look uh, well if it only has one bonus it's three if it has two bonuses it's a two four oh like interesting uh okay. odogaron right. and uh okay. rathalos and rathian are that. two four that makes sense so yeah, you're you're uh but those are also yeah. lower high rank sets. <laughs> right. After a fashion. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> Any, anyhow, uh so we're getting not to the I mean we're I think we're in end game. We're yeah, endgame. we're we're getting into the end game quite uh thoroughly at this point. Like I mean, I'm almost rank fifty. I'm right. one quest away. We're from both rank we're, 50. we're both forty nine. We're, we're both rank forty nine. They, they gate it between behind some of these like harder quests. So Yeah, they're they're like starting to mix in the XP stuff, but it still has caps yeah. and we have to go kill a it's, tempered Karen. Yeah, it's which definitely is slowing cool. down too. It's more like more focused than yeah, it was before. Before it was like fast and furious, just getting gear left and right. Kill monsters, monsters were easy enough to kill that it was not a big deal. Now, now it's asking that you think about how you kill monsters and yeah. how to do it best for your play yeah, style. You got to be in the mind space to like get these harder monsters because you're in just one shot territory. Yeah, all the time. Like if you are if you're careless at all, right, and not taking the time required, you can't just jump in and spam like you could before. Well, I mean, I'm dual blade, so I could kind of. It's knowing when to stop spamming, right? And that's that's how. It is with everybody it's like there's also uh just like the weird windows of damage that you need to be like kind of more aware of and preparing yeah. for uh rather than just like right i'm just gonna keep hitting and keep hitting yeah and kind heal, of heal myself a whole bunch right uh, it's slowing up and saying like oh i'm in multiplayer this guy's about to get his, uh, his sure. flurry let's just slow up okay the monster's down where's the weak spot we kind of reposition yeah, yeah. okay go that now is far more critical than it was ever before yeah. And CC as well. That's a, that's the other big thing yeah. I noticed at the, at the end game. Like, if you're not like blinding stuff and or uh, using knocking traps, out or yeah, knockouts and stuff like that, everything poisoning, you can do yeah. to slow them down uh, is is critical because some of the fights you're just, you can't even touch them because they're up in the air most of the time, right. out of your reach unless you're like a range unless you deal. have a gun or a bow. Yeah. And man, it's it's deep fun game yeah yeah so um, still still, still, still enjoying it slowing down quite we are a bit. we are easing up on that because Just because it's like it is it's more demanding but it's also con- it, it's still all consuming like i thought i was i had the same problem i have with diablo where i'm uh, the loop you if you don't know what the optimum thing you should be doing is you feel lost it's a little discouraging and, 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 yeah and you're like I, what am i doing i'm just spinning my wheels and then i had the moment where i'm like ah I know, and then I was back in. Uh, yeah, but uh, at the See, same I have time, the problem where I'm trying to build everything. Yeah, you. I, so I'm just going through and I'm collecting all of the sets for each of the elder dragons, and I'm also farming up all the glaives. Right now, I'm way into the hunting. You're horn. switching to hunting. Horn. I've been doing that as my main thing for quite a bit now. Uh, the last week, probably, Which I've just w- been yep. hunting horn for like like crazy. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. I just, I use this weird hammer slash bab bagpipe slash drum. Yes. And, it's a, yeah, yeah. And you... you Which you, also changed that you need to be hitting the monster in the head because you do yeah, KO damage yeah, and I stun it. Very hardcore knockout damage and it's, it feels really good. Very satisfying. A lot slower than the glaive yes. but uh, it feels very satisfying. I play music to buff everybody and uh-huh, smack uh-huh, monsters. Uh-huh. It's really good. Yeah, that's uh, it's awesome. So expect more periodical reports, maybe some celebration of victories yeah, earned victorious. or... Uh, Theme music uh, played by Joe. Yeah, milestones yeah. in uh, theme music. Yeah. yeah. Well, the hunting horn. You're doing. <laughs> oh, hunting right. Horn. The hunting horn. Maybe that's. Come on. Mm, there's, there's an idea. Yeah. They, they can give us a solo there. It's really not that fluid of a. But it's kind of hilarious. Mechanic. It is kind of a crappy bagpipe sound, and I really love it. Oh, that depends on what you're, what horn you're using. Oh, it's really? Also, a drum, a didgeridoo, and oh, there was, and a harp. Ooh. 
Yeah. Depending on the thing. Oh, and there one of them I think is like just a straight up like horn horn like an Asian style. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rico, not a Ricola uh, tie style horn. Uh, maybe I don't know. I'd have to look. Maybe that's in older older games. I don't know. We'll we'll uh, we'll investigate. And yeah, get back I, to you. I didn't think about that that much. I need to go through and uh, dig in. Get Joe's Joe's guide on the sounds of the hunting yeah. horn coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I look mean, forward to my sleep aid album <laughs> uh, coming out with a, with ASMR accompanying ASMR track. ASMR accompanying. Uh, maybe I can get Jeff Bridges to do that for me. Oh, did, did Jeff Bridges do ASMR? Wait, you don't know about this? Okay, um, just done silence. Let all speak. right. We have we have, we have some googling. Can we, to can do. We, oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, we we'll have ta- some googling. To we'll do. talk about that later. We've got yeah. some place to we've got to be. Uh, <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll all re- we'll see us see us next uh, next week, and we'll know more about Jeff Bridges ASMR. Uh, and until then, uh, thanks for watching the channel. We'll catch you again soon. <laughs> catch you guys later. Bye.